Thank you for viewing Module 6 of our Policy Surveillance Training video series. In this video, you will learn about quality control as it applies to research. By the end of this video, you should be able to understand how to check original research, define redundant research, and understand the steps in performing redundant research. As the original researcher is collecting relevant statutes, regulations, and other sources of law, the supervisor should review this information for any errors or omissions. Specifically, the supervisor should conduct spot checks in a legal search engine to ensure that the researcher collected all relevant laws, compare collected laws to an unencumbered source of law to ensure that they have been properly transcribed, and finally, verify that master sheets have effective dates and statutory history recorded for each law. This should be done prior to assigning redundant research. Redundant research consists of two researchers independently identifying and recording citations of relevant laws in one jurisdiction. When redundant research has been completed, the supervisor should review and compare the redundant research to the original research to identify where the two researchers diverged on collected laws. 100% of jurisdictions should be redundantly researched until the rate of divergence in collected laws goes below 5%. Then, only 20% of jurisdictions need be redundantly researched. Redundant research serves several purposes. First, it allows researchers to develop and refine a search strategy. This includes the search terms used, secondary sources referenced, and chapters of law that should be explored. Second, it allows the supervisor to identify errors in the original research. And finally, it ensures that all laws relevant to the project's topic in a jurisdiction have been collected. These are the steps you follow when performing redundant research. The following slides will detail these four steps. The first step in redundant research consists of the supervisor assigning 100% redundant research for the first 10 jurisdictions. This amount of redundant research should be maintained until the researchers become more familiar with the project. Once the rate of divergence between researchers goes below 5%, only 20% of jurisdictions need be redundantly researched. If the rate of divergence goes back up, more redundant research can be assigned. In some more complex projects, the rate of redundant research can remain at 100% from start to finish. For example, if there are 50 jurisdictions being studied, the first 10 jurisdictions should have redundant research, and then, if the rate of divergence goes below 5%, 8 of the following 40 jurisdictions should be redundantly researched. In order to determine the rate of divergence, the supervisor should add the total number of laws that were collected by both researchers, x, for a batch of jurisdictions, and divide it by the total number of laws collected for a batch of jurisdictions, y. For example, if the researchers collected the same 96 laws for 10 jurisdictions, and both researchers collected a total of 100 laws for these 10 jurisdictions, meaning that four unique laws were collected by one researcher and not the other, the rate of divergence is 4 out of 100, or 4%. Once redundant research has been assigned for a batch of jurisdictions, the two researchers should each independently record relevant citations on a master sheet so that they can be compared. For more information on master sheets, please visit Module 4, Collecting the Law. Once researchers have redundantly researched the same jurisdictions, the supervisor should compare what laws were collected for each jurisdiction to determine if any laws were missed by one researcher. This check can be used not only to identify which laws were collected by one researcher and not the other, but also to determine if the laws collected in general are relevant to the project. In the above example, Researcher 1 collected a law that Researcher 2 did not find, Alabama Code 32.6.7.2. Once the supervisor has identified what laws were collected by one researcher and not the other, they can meet with both researchers to discuss these divergences and determine whether these laws should be included in the legal text for that jurisdiction or not. In this meeting, the researchers will explain why they collected or did not collect a law. For example, a researcher might have decided that a law was out of scope, while the other thought that the same law was in scope. On the other hand, a researcher might have simply missed a law in his research. In the case of a researcher error, the supervisor will determine if the missed law is due to an unusual legal structure in that jurisdiction. In that case, the research protocol can be revised to avoid missing laws in a similar way for future jurisdictions. On the other hand, 
If the researcher did not see a law and is frequently missing laws in this way, additional training may be required. The search strategy can also be revised if a researcher was not finding laws with the current search strategy. This slide provides an overview of the entire redundant research process. Two researchers record citations of relevant laws in the same jurisdictions. Then, the supervisor compares and reviews these citations and finalizes the list of citations to be used for that jurisdiction. Here you will find a summary of what we have covered on quality control for research. To learn more about conducting policy surveillance, please visit the Learning Library at lawatlas.org to access additional modules and resources, including Module 7, Publication and Dissemination. Thank you for watching.